Thank you, MSQ, for having me. Hello, everyone. My name is Jack. I'm currently the Senior Strategy Manager of CGT at Lonza China. I'm responsible for both uh, the early evaluation of China's CGT CDMO market and serving our clients who want to go overseas and uh, make their global footprint with our CGT CDMO services overseas. 呃，大家好，我叫张震，来自龙仔龙沙，呃，负责 CGT 相关业务。非常高兴今天能够接受 MSQ 的邀请，跟大家做这个分享。Since MSQ is a cross-border platform, I'm going to do my sharing today in English. Here is a disclaimer from Lonza. Let's begin with a over an overview of cell and gene therapies. So we call them potentially curative therapies. In cell therapy, the final product ad administered to the patients are live cells. If the cells originated from a healthy donor, this is called allogeneic cell therapy. If they are patients' own cells, this is autologous cell therapy. In gene therapy, the purpose is to fix or replace the faulty genes of the patient, and the final product is either virus containing the gene of interest or patients' own genetically modified cells. From the last page, we and in the industry news, we know cell and gene therapy is pricey and complex. But is it worth it? Let's look at some examples. For、uh, for some current approved cell and gene therapies,、uh, for example, like、uh, we have CAR Ts for different types of lymphomas, you can see all those CAR Ts indication that those there's always a phrase R and R in them, which means relapsed or refractory,、um, because for those liquid cancers,、uh, the those those earlier treatment like chemotherapy, small molecules or antibodies. Cannot a hundred percent cure disease, so they progressed and became relapsed and or refractory. And for some rare diseases,、um, the those non CGT treatments are just target targeting at release the symptoms. And for other、uh, other rare diseases, there's even no suitable treatments for symptoms releasing. Curing those diseases is even more challenging. But after CG, cell and gene therapy got launched, from clinical data and real-world evidence, we see that patients are getting new options to be cured or live longer. From a statistical statistical report from ASGCT, the American Association of Gene and Cell Therapy,、uh, since 2017. There are nine products got approved by FDA, and four new products are under FDA BLA. Recent, recently, just after I made my slice,、uh, we see that Ali Cell from Bluebird got approved by FDA. Congratulations! So, what are some important focusing area for products to get approved? From a meeting memo、uh, back in 2018, the uh, 23rd uh, FDA Commissioner Scott said that for traditional drug re review,、uh, 80% of the review is focused on clinical portion of the process, and maybe just 20% is focusing on the product issues. For us, but for our cell and gene therapy, these two ratios swapped, which means. Eighty percent of the importance of getting approved is focusing on CMC, the manufacturing. When we see the demand of CGT, the manufacturing for traditional therapies for many disease diseases, we are turning those life-threatening diseases into chronic diseases with very stable and predictable demand. For example, for like PD one, those immuno-oncology therapies, where、uh, we are really extending the life of patients with those cancers, and they are tend to like more, more like some chronic diseases, but. Things are different here for、uh, for cell and gene therapies. Unlike those、uh, stable and high level demand for traditional therapies, for CGT therapies, we are treating patients one time at at life, which means after the prevalence peak is treated, the future demand would only be new incidences. And here, the CMC demand is becoming unpredictable for cell and gene therapies. With this nature, it might be a smart idea to let those qualified CDMOs to to do the manufacturing work, 
give you more flexibility to pharma companies. So for cell engine biotechs and pharma companies, maybe is it is a more agile uh, option to be more focused on R and D and the ability to commercialize and giving out those uh, and do not build a large and oversupplied manufacturer. And you can always give the manufacturer power to those experienced, uh, experienced and flexible uh, CDMOs along them with uh, who are already very uh, have those expertise in those know how the process of the process development and who can do the uh, scaling up work for you and have a proven record, the track record. And for the next part, I'm going to discuss more on the importance of CMC and how Loza can help you along the way. For uh, each cell and gene therapy, there is they have their, their own ch key challenges like in quality, scaling up, the cost of goods, timelines, capacity, etc. These are all pieces of puzzles to solve for the overall challenge. Commercially viable, commercial availability in an immature market. So now let's talk through some key areas of quality system and how they matter for cell and gene therapies. The regulatory standards for the manufacture of CGTs have evolved over the years and are getting more specific. However, there's still a lot of interpretation and dialogue required between industry and regulators to apply them in a face appropriate manner and consider and consider considering also the risk and benefit aspects. For both FDA and, B, and EMA, they accept that as a product moves through the clinical development phases, the level of process and, and, and analytical control increases as knowledge accumulates. However, safety standards can never be compromised and applied already as of clinical phase one. And in China, we are having a more infant or baby uh, market and, uh, and the research. So there are also, uh, so for industry and regulators, we need to uh, develop and discuss and explore those uh, critical issues together because we're always patients for first. So we can never ignore the quality and safety. So at Lanza, we can provide C CGT CDMO services at all three main segments, autologous cell therapy, allogenic cell therapy, and varivector manufacturing. And we do manu varivector manufacturing in both where varivector as a final product like AAV or adenoviruses and, a, and varivector as an interim products like the lentivirus to produce CAR Ts. And here is our vision in cell and gene therapy. We're industrializing the manufacturing from concept to patients. So with our global footprint and the flexible capacity, uh, we have five manufacture, uh, manufacture, manufacturing sites across three continents in North America, Europe, and Asia. And we are focusing on both the cell, cell area and gene area, these two key areas for CGP, CGT. And with our experienced and innovative expertise, we have and our years of pro proven record, we have provided com we have pro provided CGT services from clinical to commercial level, along with the progress of our clients. So let the numbers speak the truth. Why we are saying we are having unmatched and unparalleled experience. So far, we have done. Uh, over 150 projects for process development CGT. And we have over 20 years of experience, of GMP experience in CGT. And I'm glad to share that we are the world's first reported GMP bank in as I, IPSC. And currently we have more than 50 pro, 15 projects, uh, projects in hand, with, which are later stage uh, and larger scale projects, either in phase three or commercial products approved in FDA or EMA. And we are also the first CDMO who, who have done the 2000 liter viral vector production in suspension. And we have served over 160 cell and gene therapy customers globally. So here is our approach. We would like to call it the new product into introduction process. So with this process, 
we offer a great opportunity to identify potential issues upfront and address mitigation actions proactively and minimize later surprises which could impact time to market. So we are really help you to think to think earlier to mitigate those potential risks in CMC and to make your uh, make your progress be smoother along the way. Our services are tailored appropriately to pace clients investment through the clinical stages. We collaborate closely with the clients to align our, our services with their needs. And we focus on clients' next milestone with their ultimate goal in mind. So from, we can really help from, uh, from the beginning to the uh, to commercial stages. So from clinical and early phases, we help you to, we help you to do the manufacturability assessment and help, help you to improve or create your process development. And we, uh, we help you along the way to do those for later phases or commercial stages. We can help you to do the scaling up, scale up, uh, GMP manufacturing. And we also have a very strong dedicated dedicated regulatory teams to do those uh, to do those consulting services uh, to help you to get approved and to uh, avoid those uh, regulatory risks risks or potential loss, especially for our Chinese biotechs who want to go overseas, like to FDA and EMA. Our regulatory regulatory team can really help you in these areas. So here are just some more detailed examples of our uh, offerings. So we can, uh, so for autologous cell therapy, we have rich, rich experience from CAR T to H HSC to TILS, and for allogenic, we have experience from CAR from allogenic uh, from allogenic CAR T CAR T therapies to NK cell therapies to iPSCs, and uh, we also have uh, uh we, we also offer those like uh flagship flagship machines like cocoon the closed automatic and automated and scalable scalable machine to make car -tees. and for viral vectors we have done manufacturing and have rich rich experience in all different types of vir viruses like for AAV for Lanti, for Adno, and for alkalitic viruses. And we have experience in producing those viruses in different cell lines, like for AAV. We have ex ex experience in all using like HAC293 with plasmids, or baclovirus with in insect cells, or use mammalian. And for Lanti, we have a rich experience in both adherent and suspension, and also and we have experienced in provide uh, in manufacturing adeno and uh, oncolytic viruses with different methods and here i'm very proud to uh to share with you that we are uh we are a we are having a api approval uh sites in houston a, uh, uh, sorry pai PAI stands for pre-approved ins inspection, which means for some FDA BLA approved product products, their products are manufactured at Lanza site, and this is now very rare in uh, for CGT CDMO because there are only very few uh, products commercially approved in the market, and we are uh, we are um, we are one of them that could provide commercial manufacturing and products of uh, of those uh, pro approved uh, approved products so we're, we're really a proud of it with our years of tracks record and customers uh customers confidence and the satisfaction in our services so thank you for uh listening and watching my sharing today uh, if you have more questions in cgt and how long that can help you especially for chinese companies who want to go overseas or have a uh, have a manufacturer uh, services that's satisfied for both china and the u.s uh, dual application please contact me via email or my mobile and wechat number thank you very much okay thanks jack for the video presentation um, let's welcome our second speaker, Dr. Christopher Missling. Um, Dr. Missling is the president and CEO of Anavax, which is a person-focused biopharmaceutical company, which is dedicated to the therapeutic discovery and development of targeted CNS treatment. Um, Dr. Missling has over 20 years of healthcare industry experience within the large pharma and biotechnology industry. Prior to joining Anavax, he served as the CFO of Curis and Immunogen. In addition, at Aventis, 
Now Sanofi, Dr. Mesling's work is dedicated to finding the potential cures for neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental diseases. He has a master's and PhD from the University of Munich in chemistry and an MBA from Northwestern University Kilot School of Management. Please welcome Dr. Misling to give a speech about the insights of a new solution for the neurodegenerative diseases. Thanks. Great to be here. I appreciate the kind of invitation and looking forward to sharing with you uh, Anavex Life Sciences. Anavex Life Sciences is a public company, so I'd like you to read the forward looking statement. Anavex Life Sciences focuses on a platform for neurological disorders, which is the most demanding indication these days of the brain. We believe that chronic neurologic disorders have impaired neurorestoration. And for that reason, we need to have something which can counter or compensate for this chronic impaired homeostasis. And the good news is that the body has a mechanism to counter this, which is called a sigma-1 receptor. We have noticed that and confirmed that in several trials, among them in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and several rare diseases, including Red syndrome. We also have observed this approach is also working for preventing the disease like Alzheimer's disease. We also know that and when you have a biomarker of response in a clinical trial, you can increase your chances of success in a clinical trial because you have a better precision medicine. And we've noticed that in our clinical trials, in three independent clinical trials with the same drug, Anavex 273, we're able to demonstrate a correlation with the improvement of the patients. So all patients who improved the most also had the highest expression of that protein, which we activate, called sigma-1 receptor. We also have seen in dementia the ability to change the course, to not only delay the onset or delay the uh, severity, but also to make patients coming out of the trial with better memory. We've seen that in two clinical trials, in Alzheimer's disease on the left and in Parkinson's and dementia on the right. But not only that, we also integrated in all our clinical trials, the entire genome, which I think no company has done that before in CNS, where we measure the entire genomic background of all participating patients. And as you can see, that we noticed that in Parkinson's disease and in Alzheimer patients, which have been gone through a trial, which have downregulated genes in the pathology, they were upregulated again with Anavex 273. So basically compensating for the uh, diseased pathway downregulation, which is obviously very intriguing. And the platform right now is consisting of several late stage drugs in Alzheimer's disease. In Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease, dementia, Red syndrome, and other indications of developmental nature. We also want to point out that the largest market right now is Alzheimer's disease and dementia, which is the key product of our pipeline. And it's very important to be aware that the correlation with Alzheimer's disease is clearly with age. The older you get, the more likely you get Alzheimer's. And it is around the world and Alzheimer patients will um, become more and more prevalent because all the patients will, uh, all the people will live longer and will result in a higher level of Alzheimer pathology. And the number of patients and other indications are here summarized, including schizophrenia, Parkinson's disease, and other rare diseases, which are also very important. And we've, in regard to rare diseases, we have developed a drug of X273, which has shown very nice response in several in the, uh, several features of PAC for of Red syndrome in two clinical trials, we received also um, uh, often designation as well as fast track designation and public voucher eligibility from the FDA in the US. And we continue to create additional value with additional pipeline products. 
And the catalysts are the following. Expect the readout of the Alzheimer study 004 this year in, uh, and it's expected um, in the fall, as well as the excellent study, as well as other studies. So now let me quickly describe the mechanism of action. So downstream, you know that there's several pathologies of a bed aggregation, a aggregation of tau and uh, inflammation, which all were reduced with anovex 273. We also have seen that further upstream, this anovex 273 mechanism of action is demonstrating the ability to restore chromatin remodeling, which is very important upstream effect. And what's, what is very important is that, that we did see a target engagement of the drug with the sigma-1 receptor, which is very important because it confirms our effect of the drug. Let me now share a few uh, background information about the indications we're covering. Let me start with a rare disease called RET syndrome. It exclusively happens in girls. They are born with a genetic defect, which leaves them without the ability to speak, without ability to to move and to have very high level of anxiety and uh, impairment. And we've noticed in three trials, and two of them have finished, that in these two finished trials, a very nice safety profile as well as efficacy in all the trials. You notice in the US study R01, that there was very strong, significant response in efficacy of all the endpoints, as well as in the R02, the international study, which demonstrated even stronger effect of the drug, given the drug was in a higher dose. But not only that, we also noticed that a improvement in quality of life, as well as reduction in seizures, went along, as well as biomarker of response from the pathology. And in the pathology of Rett syndrome, there's an overexpression of GABA, which is um, pathological, which is not good. And we were able to uh, increase the level of GABA again with our drug, which did not happen in the placebo arm. At the same time, we saw another biomarker of response, LAAA, which is overexpressed to be reduced with anovex 2 And the safety was very well tolerated, very good drug profile compared to other competitive drugs out there, which demonstrated features which we did not show, like diarrhea and no vomiting and no fever in the patients treated with anovex 273. And this is now the study which is ongoing, a phase three study in patriotic patients. Similar design, similar endpoints. Now let me move to Parkinson's dementia. It's an unmet need because more patients with Parkinson now need to uh, are able to live longer, longer. And according to the fact that longevity or li life expectancy increase also correlates with Alzheimer's disease, they also become dementia. And uh, these dementia patients need a treatment. And Anavex 273 demonstrated in a study, in a placebo control study, in 132 patients, uh, dose dependent improvement in the MDS UPDRS, which is a classical endpoint of Parkinson's disease. And we also noticed in the cognition features an improvement in, in a very nice dose dependent matter of the cognitive features. And that it was using a method which correlates very highly with the ADAS COG which is the primary endpoint of the upcoming Alzheimer's disease study. So very nice dose dependent reduction of cognitive impairments and improvement of cognitive features in the highest dose group uh, from baseline. And the Alzheimer's disease pathology study is uh, the most intriguing coming up because it's coming up very soon, where we did demonstrate in a phase 2A, a small study, a very nice dose dependent um, steady uh, no declining uh, of the cognition and dysfunction, while patients who had not the drug or not enough drug, they declined as you would expect in this disease. And the ongoing, the Finnish study, which is now reading out very soon, uh, will be include 509 patients over 48 weeks and uh, measuring primary endpoints of others COG and ADL activities or daily living, which have been measured before in the phase 2A. We also have integrated in the study several biomarkers of response, as well as MRI and CDR, some of the boxes. Last note, but not least, I'd like to share a little bit about our uh, sister drug from uh, Anovex 371, 
which had demonstrated very nice preclinical data in frontal temporal dementia and Alzheimer's disease, as well as schizophrenia. And the phase one study was very successful with showing a very good safety profile in high doses, up to high doses. And we're now moving forward with this program in frontal temporal dementia, schizophrenia, and Alzheimer's disease as well. And in summary, let me share with you that we are pursuing large markets by applying precision medicine uh, to develop both global aging indications that includes Alzheimer's and Parkinson, as well as catastrophic, often clinically caused diseases, which include Red syndrome with high unmet need. And uh, we have enough uh, support from the foundation so far from the Michael Fox Foundation, as well as from the Red Foundation. I'd like to thank them for that. And last but not least, this would not all happen without the team and as well as the scientific advisors, which are very well respected in the respective area of the expertise. That I'd like to thank and you see the contact information for further information, which is also available on www.anavex.com. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Misling, for the presentation. Um, let's welcome our third speaker, Dr. Yichuan Maria Chen, um, the VP of Business Development in Brian Biotechnology. Um, Dr. Chen is a cellular immunologist specializing in the study of T-cell and B-cell activities. She received her PhD in biochemistry at the Stony Brook University and did her thesis at the Coates Green Harvard Laboratory. She then conducted her postdoctoral research at UCSF in Genetech. And after Dr. Chen returned to Taiwan in 2015, she de devoted herself to establishing the international business development strategies for new drug development startup companies. And as a VP of BD at Brian, Dr. Chen focuses her efforts on business development and public relations and helps Brian's assets gained international attention in the past year. So please welcome Dr. Chen to give a speech about the PDF derived short peptide technology platform. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Maria Chen. I'm the VP of Business Development from Brin. Um, so it's an honor that uh, we're being selected by the organizer to share a little bit of what we have uh, developed in Brin and our most uh, current progress. So Brin is funded by Dr. Haishan Jen and Dr. Frank Lee in 2013. As you can see, they both have very extensive experience in big pharma in the States um, for over 30, 40 years uh, in new drug development. So when Dr. Jen established Brin, she has this vision that um, she really wants to develop high quality of medicine, but with affordable price. So we're using a very unique approach here that basically we will license in uh, early lead optimized assets into Brin. And by using our translational experience to really speed up the value adding process for this type of asset. So at the beginning, uh, in 2015, we have licensing in four different uh, technology platform. And through this uh, translational power, we call to really add value to those assets. And we start to generate um, proof of concept data. And that will allow us to either out license or co development or spin off this platform technologies. And currently, um, two of the platform we already spin up as a new company called Ascendo, which is you know, very actively in uh, immuno-oncology uh, area. And then uh, we also very successfully licensing out our lead asset to China region. So currently we are working really hard to prepare for IPO. And so then we have enough resource to you know, keep pushing our project forward. The one of the uh, platform that we kept uh, in-house to keep developing is called PADF derived short peptide technology. So this platform is based on a protein called PEDF, which is a multifunctional protein with different functional domain. And we took one of the domain has a very unique function to regenerate uh, stem cells. So by taking out the sequence of that functional domain, we generate a peptide from it that can promote the differentiation of the stem cells. Therefore, we can speed up this um, process to 
repair the damaged tissue. And because it's working directly on the stem cell, so we can always observe early onset of efficacy um, and in very, various disease model. And also because this is a very short peptide with 29 amino acid and it has natural sequence from PEDF. So there's a very low immunogenicity problem here. And by using the solid phase peptide synthesis, which is a chemical way to um, generate this peptide, we have no endotoxin risk. And we can also keep the costs very low uh, when we generate the API itself. And also with the current formulation, we are able to have very high stability for our peptide and up to two years of shelf life. So this is very good for commercialization as well. With the same API, the same um, peptide, um, Brain has developed several different indications and utilized this peptide to repair different type of tissue. And the most advanced project, which is BRM421, that we already finished two phase two study and also finish the CMC process for a phase three level materials. And therefore we already have set the day with uh, FDA to have this end of phase two meeting by the end of October. And the first patient in will be uh, M for January next year. And the second indication that we focus on is a rare disease called neurotrophic keratitis. This have even more severe cornea damage that uh, have very limited um, therapeutic option. So with this indication, we are applying for ODD as well as uh, IND this year. Um, and hopefully we can initiate the phase two study by early next year. And with the same peptide, um, obviously with different formulation, we can also use it to regenerate um, cartilage for treating osteoarthritis. And this project is in a little bit earlier stage that we're still in non-clinical study, uh, try to figure out the effective formulation for uh, phase one study. And then we also have an even earlier project that's still in discovery uh, phase for foot ulcer and alopecia. So for the rest of the time, I'm going to focus only on the, our lead SF, BRM421, and um, show you how well is our peptide can work to help this type of patients. So as you may know, that dry eye disease is a global issue that over 900 million people is diagnosed with um, this condition, um, among which there's about 90 million people that have very severe dry eye, which means that the current available medicines or artificial tear has no longer been effective to control their symptoms. So definitely this is a very serious unmet need, especially with the lifestyle change that we use more 3C products as well as the aging population. This um, problem will be um, exacerbated in the future years. So the market um, is pretty good that from last year is about $5 billion uh, with a 5% CAGRs, it will be estimated to reach 7 billion in 2027. As I mentioned earlier, uh, PEDF peptide has this very unique function to regenerate stem cells. So for particular for dry eye, it's, it is affecting the limbo stem cell at the limbus region. Uh, where when you have this uh, cornea wound, usually the stem cell in the limbus will start activated and proliferate and differentiate into new tissue and therefore repair the wound. So our peptide basically can speed up this process to help the wound repairing much faster. And as you can see here, um, highlight in blue here, these are the current dry eye medicine that's in the US market. Uh, you can see that most of the medicine are focused on anti-inflammation type of mechanism. And usually the problem is that uh, either it has a very late onset, usually wait for three to six months before it kicks in, or it's using steroids. As you can see that even though it has very uh, quick onset, but it has a lot of um, side effects and cannot be used long-term. Using the regenerative peptide, we can have this, this very quick onset. Within two weeks, we can already repair the cornea and with very, very minimum side effect. The major side effect we see is installation pain, which just means when you do the eye drop, you'll feel about five to 10, ten seconds of stinging. And this is due to one of the excipient that we use in the eye drop. It's not due to the API itself. 
So we actually are working uh, into new formulation to deal with this problem. And then we will have very minimum side effect compared to all the current medicine. And as you can see here, we also have the uh, longest patent life. The China right for 4 to 1 has already been licensing out to China Grand Pharma in 2019. And currently we're working very closely with um, CGP to help them initiate a phase two study in China. And here to want to show you some of the uh, animal study um, to really showcase the efficacy of our peptide. So you can see that um, this is a mouse dry eye model that by using green force and dye, we can label the damaged site on the cornea. So you can see the green color here. Those are the damaged site on the cornea. By treating with the vehicle alone, you can see that after seven days, there's not much improvement. While when we use our peptide to treat the same uh, condition, you can see that uh, after seven days, most of the cornea wound has been repaired. And by comparison to the current medicine for dry eye, for example, Restasis is the anti-inflammation drug, dexamethasone is the steroids, and CMC is the artificial tear. You can see that within eight days, most of the uh, drug is not being show any efficacy yet, but with our only with treating with our peptide, you can see that most of the cornea has been repaired. And here's the quantification of how well the score is reduced uh, when we treat with our peptide. The more uh, score reduction means the, the better repair of the cornea. So this is a, another um, rabbit study that can really showcase the MOA of our peptide. So basically what we did here is that by remove half of the limbus where is um, limbal stem cells resides, we can create this very severe damage to the uh, stem cell layer. And then by treating with our peptide for two weeks, we will, then we allow the limbus to regenerate for two months. And then we do another rounds of damage, again, treat with our peptide for only two weeks, and then allow the, uh, the limbo layer to regenerate for two months. So at this point, if the regeneration of the limbus are successful, then usually when we do a, a cornea damage uh, challenge, which means that we just use alcohol to burn off the top of the cornea, the rabbit can usually repair the cornea damage within a week if the limbus is healthy. So as you can see here, with the vehicle group, the regeneration of the limbus is not very successful. There's a lot of vessel growing. And after the second round of regeneration, you can see that basically the cornea is being overtaken by the conjunctiva tissue. And obviously there's no repair when we do the challenge. And then when we treat with our peptide, you can see that at the first round, the regeneration is already quite successful. And after the even two times very severe damage, you can see that the cornea still look relatively normal. And when we do this cornea damage challenge, the rabbit can repair its cornea within seven days. So this really demonstrates that our peptide can help regenerate the stem cell in the limbus region, and therefore to maintain the normal function of the stem cells at the cornea region. So as, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the 4 to 1 project, we already finished two phase two study. So here is the data from our um, phase two study. Um, as you can see here, FDA usually require um, two copamary endpoint before we can approve a drug for dry eye disease. So one endpoint is called sign, which is more an objective measure of how well you can, you know, revert the disease. The second um, pr primary endpoint is called symptoms, which is more a subjective measure that, you know, obtained from a questionnaire uh, of the patients. So you can see here that we are, ch we choose to use uh, fluorescent staining to really demonstrate how well the cornea can be repaired after using our peptide. So you can see that within 15 days, the, uh, the there's a, about 1.3 score reduction here, which means that most of the cornea is being repaired compared to placebo group, which has only 0, 0 0.2 uh, reduction. And same thing with the symptom that at day 15, you can see that it's uh, by treating with our peptide, most patients already feel much better 
um, the symptom wise. And what's more amazing is that even at day eight, after seven days, one week of treatment, um, some patients are already still starting to feel more comfortable uh, of the relief of their symptoms. So this really demonstrates the early onset, um, particularly for the symptoms that um, our peptide can have this uh, very quick onset effect. So now we're ready to uh, enter in phase three study. As you can see here, we try to keep most of the criteria the same. The only two things we change, uh, first is that the, the scoring system for symptoms, we change from a discomfort score, which is uh, zero to four points, to a visual analyzed score, which is zero to 100 points. So this can give us better resolution to differentiate um, different symptoms. And then the other thing is that, as I mentioned earlier, because the form formulation will have this installation pain, so we try to lower the concentration of that stabilizer in order to eliminate this um, side effect. And what we find out is by lowering the concentration, we have data to demonstrate that the, this excipient can still maintain the st stabilizing effect for our peptide and still maintain about two years of shelf life. So this is uh, very good. So we can really eliminate the side effect here. And obviously for a phase three study, we will increase the patient number to, to ensure that we can hit the statistical significance for the treatment. So that's uh, the most current progress of our assets. And uh, we're currently very actively looking for a partner to help us even further uh, speed up the development of these assets. So if you're interested, please, please feel free to contact me. Um, here's my email and contact information. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Chen, for the presentation. Um, let's welcome our fourth speaker, Abre Wen, um, BD Associate Director from GE Biotechnology. Um, G Biotech is a developer of the life bio, uh, biotherapeutics intended to research innovative microbiome-based drugs. Um, prior to G Biotech, Avery had business development experience in various pharmaceutical companies in China, including the CMS and Apic Hope. Um, please welcome Avery to give a speech about G Biotechnology, novel LBBT development. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank the organizer for giving this opportunity to me. And it's my great honor to share the profile of GE Biotech with you. GE is a clinical stage of biotech leading LBP in China. Over the past nine years, we have been dedicating to develop accessible drugs to benefit patients. Uh, the main candidate in our pipeline is a novel string-based LBP called SK08. Uh, notably, it is the first oral LBP that was proved for clinical trial in China. Uh, besides, the therapeutic areas uh, we are addressing include IBD, CID, oncology, metabolic diseases, and immune diseases. To top it off, two GMP live facilities have already been set up in our platform, which can fulfill the preclinical, clinical, and commercial stage production needs. This timeline shows our development history. GE was founded in 2013 when China was in lack of any specific regulation and the CRO company in the LBP industry. So it took us five years to finish all the non-clinical studies and researches uh, and also build up our own facilities. So in 2018, the ID of SKOA was finally submitted to CDE. Meanwhile, we also uh, raised a $7.5 million Series A round funding. And in 2019, we were excited to see that SKO a was approved for clinical trial in China. And after its phase one clinical trial had been completely successfully, we raised another about $17 million Series B round funding. And last year, the phase two uh, clinical trial of SKOA started, uh, which is expected to be finished uh, this year. Uh, besides, 
the ID of another candidate, SK10, was uh, filed to CDE. And this year, in the past uh, eight months, there are also some achievements that have already been made by Zhiyi. For example, the uh, a new IND approval of SKOA for its new indication in solid tumor has been obtained. And we also raised another round of funding. This is our management teams. Dr. Wang Ye is the co-founder and CEO of the company. With more than 20 years experience in drug discovery and company management, he has a very profound understanding in LVP industry. Under, the leadership, under his leadership, uh, Zhi also made uh, many achievements in R&D and financing. Uh, Dr. Liu Yang Yang is uh, the co-founder and VP of Zhiyi. As one of the discoverers of SK08, uh, he is responsible for the R&D department and the medical department. Uh, in addition to that, the CMC development uh, is taken charge by Dr. Li, another VP of the company, who is well experienced in uh, biological drugs development. What's more, Ms. Chang is the pharmaco uh, pharmacology director and Ms. Wang is the medical director. Both of them are very uh, skillful and rich of experience. Uh, speaking of our consultants, Professor Zhi is the chief phys uh, physician and uh, well-known expert in gastroenterology. Uh, he is the founder and also the broad member of Zhi Yi. Uh, and what's more, he also works uh, for CDE as a reviewer. Uh, Professor Yang is a renowned microbiologist uh, with more than 200 publications in international journals. Uh, last but not least is uh, Dr. B. She is the Associate Research Fellow in State Key Laboratory of Pathogen and Biosecurity. With the uh, guidance and support from these three experts really warrants our development success. Actually, with the development of science and technology, uh, numerous relationships between microbiome and human, uh, uh, human health have, have already been uncovered, which is attracting more and more uh, scientific and public interests. Uh, during the last decade, a uh, novel uh, biotherapies containing live organisms have emerged, uh, which is intended to uh, prevent, treat, and cure human disease. FDA codified this kind of uh, novel biotherapy as uh, live biotherapeutic products, abbreviated as LBPs. Here, I want to emphasize is that the Chinese microbiome company are quite different from that overseas. Uh, this is the data from a local analysis company in 2019. From the left figures, it's very obvious that about 75% of the foreign uh, microbiome companies are targeting at developing new uh, treatment methods, while only 15% of the companies are uh, focusing on detection. However, when it comes to China, about 72% of the companies are doing business with detec the detection, uh, while only 11% of the company would like to develop a new uh, thera uh, therapy. And here we have summarized the LVP uh, that in phase two and three clinical trial from all over the world, it's, uh, which also reflects the same reality. Most of the products are coming from American and uh, European countries. On, on one hand, it was to be mentioned that the two products, SIR-109 uh, and RBS-2660, uh, the BLA of these two products have already submitted to FDA, and so we believe that the first LBP will uh, launch in the market very soon and which will encourage the whole LVP industry. On the other hand, we are, we are also pleased to find that Zhiyi as a Chinese company, uh, which has a, a 
uh, uh, LBP products based on the new strain that was entering into phase two clinical trial. And here is our robust pipeline. The first, first candidate is SK8, which has three indications. Uh, the first indication is IBS. Uh, it's, it's under its phase two clinical trial, and which is expected to be finished this year. According to the latest news, the recruitment of phase two have already been uh, uh, have already finished. And the second indication is uh, UC, which is ready for phase two. And the third indication is for a solid tumor, whose ID in China have already been obtained, and uh, uh, its FID uh, for FDA will be submitted this year. The second candidate is SK10, which is used for chemotherapy-induced diarrhea. Uh, about its ID, we will uh, we are planning to file it to F. Uh, NMPA and the FDA uh, at the same time. Uh, about actually, IND for FDA had uh, will be submitted this month. Um, we believe that more and more programs are expected to enter its clinical stage uh, in the foreseen years. In terms of SKO8, uh, what, uh, like what I had already mentioned, it is the first oral LBP approved for clinical trial in China. Except for some GLP compliance safety assessment, most of the preclinical studies were completely independently by our team. Um, in a third in the action with uh, CDE, G is paving the way uh, to the founding regulatory concept of LBP in China. Uh, what's more, we our work also obtained attention from the world. Now we have established an in-house platform from culture to to drug. One of our advantages is that we can leverage our platform and system to quickly scream and talk in at some strings which have high potential to be developing to drugs and make it into a real one. And two. Uh, GMP-like facilities have already established in Zhiyi, uh, which will guarantee our production needs from discovery to commercialization. And here are some pictures of our equipment and the devices. Considering of our um, R&D ability and uh, future potential, uh, local, a fam a famous local securities have already uh, recommended investors to keep an eye on us. And we are so very uh, grateful to be granted as 2021 Guangzhou Future Unicorn of Innovation Enterprise. And here's some publication of our team. And all in all, in such a domain, domain where few regulation standards uh, is available. We think uh, sharing the experience and uh, enhance the collaboration from the partners uh, with the partners from all over the world is very uh, important. And if you are interested in our pipelines, we're open to talk. And if you have some LBP products uh, that are targeting at Chinese market, we believe that GE is your preferred partner. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Avery, for the presentation. Um, let's welcome our last speaker, Dr. Jiang Chiang Li, founder and CSO from Senlang Biotech, which is focused on the treatment of immune cells, new technology development, and application of high tech enterprises. And prior to Senlang, Dr. Li is a distinguished professor of the Second Hospital of Hebei Medical University and municipal government special allowance expert. Dr. Lee obtained his PhD in immunology from the University of Würzburg, Germany. He completed his postdoc fellowship in City of Hope Cancer Research Center and worked as the senior scientist in Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in the US. Um, please welcome Dr. Lee to give a speech about Sun Long's CAR-T therapy, therapy platform. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Jian Changli. I'm the founder of CSO of Ceylon Bio company. Ceylon Bio is an all-in-one cell therapy company. Um, I'm glad to have the opportunity to introduce uh, Ceylon Bio. So investment highlights of the Ceylon Bio. Uh, first of all, we have the innovative cell therapy pipelines. Uh, CL101 uh, is a CD7 targeted CAR T cell, uh, first in class and nanobody based uh, naturally selected uh, CDK, CD7 CAR T with uh, remarkable safety and uh, uh, efficacy uh, without a genetic uh, magnification, manipulation. So, this product developed from our Alpcar platform. The second pipeline is the uh, universal CD123 targeted uh, car gamma delta T cell. Uh, it has a super, super proliferation cap capability and also efficacy proven in early phase trial. This product uh, developed from the Loga platform. The third one is the B19, which is targeted on the CD19. We use a distinctive MAD promoter uh, can increase the safety of the product. And the second highlight is the UpCar discovery, CAR-T discovery platform. Uh, we developed the whole process nanobody research and development chain, including the uh, antigen uh, immunization, nanobody screening, validation, and also uh, the CAR T drug discovery uh, platforms. The third one is our uh, super uh, proliferated LOGA manufacturing platform. Uh, this one is the off-the-shelf car gamma delta T cell platform with super uh, in vitro proliferation efficacy proven in the early phase trial. Uh, second slides, I will show the milestones for the Ceylon Bell. We are the largest cell therapy research center in Johnson, China. We built it in the, uh, January 2016 in Hebei province. And uh, uh, now we have uh, 5,000 square meters GMP facility, the research center, research and development center. Uh, and also uh, we had a clinical laboratory. Uh, and our CD19 car product uh, had been approved uh, in 2020 in May. Uh, July of 2021, we succeeded in the UpCar platform, and October, we succeeded in the LOGAD platform. Um, we got a, a 30 million US dollar uh, financing in the 2022 April. And our 101 product uh, initiated the IND enabling trial in the May of the 2022. Um, Ceylon Bio's all-in-one cell therapy platform has end-to-end, uh, 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 -end, including the innovative research and uh, the IND manufacturing and also the clinical collaborations. Um, we have the Alpcar uh, drug discovery platform and we have the Loga the manufacturer uh, platform and also for the IND application we have in-house manufacturing and uh, quality control, including the plasmid, uh, lativarial vector, vectors, and also the cells. Um, clinical part, uh, we have 13 partnering clinical centers, 15 cell therapy candidates, ca covering nine indications and applied in the IIT studies. And we also have a certified uh, a clinical laboratory uh, can do the flow, uh, qPCR, uh, 
uh, phenotyping and also ADA and so on for the uh, immunomonitoring the CAR T in vivo persistence and also the side effects of the cytokines release syndrome. Pipeline uh, to separate the in the autologous derived uh, APCAR uh, liquid tumors we have CD19, CD7 and also one for AML. For solid tumor we have the GBM targeted and uh, gastrointestinal and also have a universal uh, targets. Uh, all those uh, CAR sequence uh, generated by our APCAR uh, system. For allergenic, our gamma delta T cell platform, uh, we focus on the CD123, uh, BCMA, and also two of the solid tumor targets. Uh, all those targets, the sequence of those targets, uh, is also come from the APCAR, and we uh, transduce the APCAR sequence into the allergenic. Uh, genetic gamma delta T cells. The first product is uh, anti CD7 CAR T. Um, this product had unmet clinical needs for the T cell uh, malignancies. Uh, and also, to develop the CD7 CAR T cell therapy, uh, there are uh, several barriers including the shared antigenic and also the T-cell fratricide uh, and the cost and the off-targets of genetic uh, uh, manipulation uh, to collect the su sufficient uh, functional T-cell and also uh, to avoid the contamination from the tumor cells. Um, this is a the naturally selected um, CD7 means no genetic, no, no genetic manipulation required. And uh, this product has higher cell viability, higher CD7 car molecular expression, and has a significantly larger CD8 subset, and also increased the central memory phenotype. Uh, from the manufacturer, we had uh, almost a 100% uh, successful rate, uh, even for some high tumor burden patients. Um, and also without a gene genetic modification, uh, we can uh, decrease the cost of the product. Uh, and also without uh, the off-target risk. Uh, this slide shows that we had tried a different or compared a different approach to generate a CD7 car, uh, CD7 negative selected T cell, and also the naturally selected CD7 car, and also the CD7 knockout uh, CD7 car. And uh, finally, we found that the AS7 car is, uh, has many advantages. So some functional data show that the A7 card, the red one, um, even have the lower cell viability at the beginning, but 14 days, there are not much difference. And also the car positive percentage in the A7 card has dramatically higher, almost 100% uh, than the others. They had a higher CD8 cells and also the memory type we can find uh, we can find uh, the central memory uh, higher percentage in the AS7 car and uh, the animal data show that both the AS7 car and the KO7 car uh, has a super um, anti-tumor functionality in mouse. We initiated a post, uh, phase well phase trial uh, in the uh, clinical and uh, 14 patient, 14 TA error patient and uh, 6 TLB error patients um, which is some uh, baseline of these patients 
and uh, we prove that well uh, one has a good tolerance and a deep remission. Uh, the media follow-up time is uh, 142 days, uh, and the transfection rate is 95 percent. 100 percent manufacturer success rate. Uh, 28 days after each, uh, fusion, 95 um, percent patient have the MRD negative uh, CR or CRI. And uh, the 509 patients, uh, the EMR uh, got a CR um, at 29. 95 patients had a no or mild CRS, mostly the grade 1. 90% no ICANS. This figure shows the uh, patients, the duration of the uh, CAR-T efficacy. Uh, this work has been published in the blog. Um, and also, uh, targeted on different uh, ty patient types uh, has been presented in the 2021 ASH conference with two oral presentations of, of China. Um, the next slides we will talk about the CD19 car. We minimizing the toxicity with the distinctive promoter structure. So here, this uh, structure shows that uh, uh, besides the promoter difference, uh, the other part of the car constructs uh, is completely the same. So this product, uh, we prove that for the first time that uh, MAD uh, promoter has higher transduction efficiency but a lower uh, density um, at the surface of the car, um, which can reduce the cytokines release without uh, uh, reducing the cytotoxicity. And also we prove that there are better anti-leukemia activity in the animal model. Some data show that uh, the um, MAD promoter has a high transduction efficiency, uh, but uh, reduced uh, the density of the car molecules. And uh, the animal model shows that uh, this uh, um, MAD promoter has a better anti-tumor functionality in vivo, in mouse. And also we had uh, some data from the clinical um, we recreated uh, 21 patients uh, with one or three dose levels, uh, three times to uh, 10 to 11, 10 to five, uh, and uh, five, 10 per kilogram. Um, the result shows that uh, no ICANS and mild CRS for most patients on day 28. Uh, no CRS in the 14.3% uh, patients, grade 1 CRS in 81% patients. So that means this product has really the, I mean the safety, but not affect the toxicity. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, product, the next slide shows this clinic uh, uh, effect the efficacy of the clinical, we can got 100% uh, the MRD negative CR. Uh, the last product we will briefly introduce our, uh, we did have one car gamma delta T cell, the universal novel, we did have one platform. Uh, I will not uh, talk about uh, too much about the background of the gamma delta, but we know that uh, the gamma delta has a we did have one and uh, we did have two subsets. And we use the we did have one and derived from the cord blood, use the antibody and the cytokines uh, cocktails 
to transaction car and then uh, do the off the shelf infusion. And we can see the transaction rate and also the expansion capability and show in virtually and in vivoly the uh, gamma data functionality against uh, the tumor. And also in the patient, uh, we approve that the gamma data T cell can be expanded after the 21 days of the infusion, uh, which proved that uh, gamma data T cell can be in vivo persistence uh, for 21 days. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, thanks, Dr. Lee, for the presentation. Um, Dr. Lee's presentation concluded today's Bio Around World Summit. Um, thank you very much for joining our summit today. If you have any question or you are interested in any program introduced today, please feel free to contact us through the WeChat or email. Thank you. <laughs>